These are the shows that give us more reasons to binge. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for another Top 10 Netflix Originals. Toothpaste dries up a zit on my chin. Wow, winded. Haven't done that for a while. Oh, good. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at more great shows worth binge-watching right now. If your favorite show isn't on here, make sure to check out our first list of the Top 10 Netflix Originals. Wow, what's the occasion? Oh, I don't know, just a little Saturday morning breakfast. Oh. Number 10, Lady Dynamite. A lady's gotta be ready for when it happens. And right now, it's happening. From the minds behind South Park and Arrested Development is a sentence that sets the bar pretty high. But shows based on a stand-up comedian's life or routine don't always translate well to television. Maria Bamford decided to take the risk and bring her neurotic brain and fragile ego to Netflix. They're angry and they, they want me to get angry and I'm not, I'm not angry. While not exactly a situational comedy, the show is loosely based on her real-life struggles with Hollywood, her family, and her mental health, and is told with heavy use of flashbacks. His career choices for me in the past haven't always been so great, like the time he insisted I could improvise on a network sitcom. Traditionally, these themes don't scream out comedy, but Bamford's unique take on life definitely makes up for it. It's episodic comedy like you've never seen before. You must feel pressure to be funny all the time. Not really. Number nine, The Crown. My name is Elizabeth. And long live Queen Elizabeth. When original content from streaming services started sneaking into the Golden Globes and Emmy Awards, people took note. But nobody thought that Netflix would start picking up awards and nominations so quickly. But they did, with The Crown's 2017 Golden Globes win for Best Television Drama and Best Actress in a Drama Series. She is the essence of your duty, loving her, protecting her. Chronicling the rise to power of Claire Foy's Queen Elizabeth II, this incredibly expensive show was a huge gamble for Netflix, but it seems to have paid off. Combining the drama and pomp of Downton Abbey with real-life scandal and the world's obsession with the royals, the appeal and success of this show was inevitable. Why would I scare her? You're the queen. Only some of the time. All the time. Number eight, F is for family. Frank, you should answer it. What if somebody got hurt? Nobody ever gets hurt at supper, Susan, okay? Mainstays like The Simpsons and Family Guy may continue to dominate the world of network animated sitcoms, but Netflix more than proved their worth with the 2014 hit BoJack Horseman. Look, for a lot of people, life is just one long hard kick in the urethra. They followed this up with another hidden gem, F is for Family, a hilarious look at middle-class America in the late 1970s. With the voice talents of comedian Bill Burr, Sam Rockwell, Laura Dern, and Justin Long, and inspired by Burr's own childhood, it's perfect for anybody who grew up in the mellow decade or just appreciates good comedy. Aren't these seats great? We're so close, I can see the ash on the quarterback cigarette. Like BoJack, F is for Family can be vulgar and all too real at times, but that's just part of its rough and ready charm. You're not paying enough attention to your family. Well, at least I'm not screaming at it. Number seven, The Get Down. Why it is, Ezekiel, that you seem to want to be nothing, but with just a little courage, you could really be something. Television is becoming more epic in scope and scale, and The Get Down proves that. Stewing in director Baz Luhrmann's mind for a decade, this trippy journey through New York City in the late 70s chronicles the fall of disco and the rise of hip hop. Each episode becomes a kaleidoscopic musical tour of the Bronx, using real historical characters and events to tell the fictional story of Ezekiel, a hip hop prodigy, and his love for Mylene, a wannabe disco singer. I feel like I got thunder and lightning inside me. You make me nervous. Anyone familiar with Lerman's work will immediately recognize his signature energy and passion in every single scene. All respect to the founder and his crew, but the Judas is here and his name is Stu. Number six, Jessica Jones. Option two rarely pans out. <laughs> 
Marvel Cinematic Universe had already expanded to television with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but there was an untapped market on Netflix, where Marvel could create a mini-universe of misfit heroes, as unfiltered, gritty, and dark as they should be. Series like Daredevil and Luke Cage each have a unique take on superhero life, but the biggest surprise was Jessica Jones, which at the time was a pretty obscure player in the Marvel canon. Not only did you physically rape me, but you violated every cell in my body and every thought in my goddamn head. Less spandex and aliens and more commentary and sexual abuse, this brilliantly written series shocked everyone with its frank depiction of a damaged and broken individual who just happens to have superpowers and maybe a drinking problem. I hate feeling this way. I don't know how you handle it. It's called whiskey. Number five, Black Mirror. I'm like an hour away. Don't come. I don't want you here. Premiering on Channel 4 in 2011, Black Mirror is a revolutionary look at modern society and our destructive relationship with technology. And ironically, it became an instant cult hit thanks to the internet. They filmed me. Filmed you. Through my computer camera. As they did with other cult hits like Arrested Development and Trailer Park Boys, Netflix took the opportunity to give Black Mirror new life on their platform, with some added star power in front of and behind the camera, including the likes of Bryce Dallas Howard and director Dan Trachtenberg. There's gonna be something bad in there, I can feel it. The one-off stories offer brilliant and chilling looks into an unflinching crystal ball, with bizarre and shocking endings not seen since The Twilight Zone or The Outer Limits. Gonna let them suffer another minute. No. Okay. no! 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 Number four, making a murderer. How are you doing? Oh, hello. How are you? Oh, pretty good. People are obsessed with murder mysteries, especially stories about real life homicides and wrongful convictions like Rectify or the podcast Serial. In this docu-series about a man wrongfully convicted of rape, released after 18 years in prison, then convicted again of murder, became a worldwide phenomenon. The people that were close to Steve knew he was harmless. He was always happy, happy, happy. The implications of what the filmmakers present to the audience, almost 10 years of material about the conviction of Stephen Avery and his nephew Brendan Dassey, is damning to the US legal system. Of course, the motivations behind the show are controversial and clear, and its influence has even reached the White House. But even so, this is an irresistible drama that will have you demanding more. Number three, Master of None. Me and uh, this young lady were... Yep, there it is. Aziz Ansari is not a lazy guy. Apart from the book publishing, stand-up shows, and wrapping up Parks and Recreation, Ansari figured that 2015 wasn't busy enough, so he decided to create, write, and star in a new show inspired by his struggles as a 30-something actor in New York City. I want to try it again, but this time we need you to do an accent. You mean like an Indian accent? Yeah, yeah. He pokes fun at his family, his upbringing, his personal issues, and how the entertainment industry treats an American Indian actor such as himself. Look, man, Indians just aren't at that level yet. Yeah, there's more Indians popping up every now and then, but we're like set decoration. Written from the heart, and with the biting social commentary we've come to expect from him, this Emmy Award-winning hit is the millennials' version of a Day in the Life sitcom. Why do you have to go to work so early? Can't you quit and just start working at Boning Industries? This Boning Industries. Number two, Narcos. Yo soy Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria. Streaming and producing films and shows from countries worldwide, Netflix has long had international appeal. A bilingual original series seemed inevitable, and Narcos ended up becoming one of their biggest hits to date. Mega. Gracias, Don Pablo. The first two seasons follow the investigations and real-life rise and fall of drug kingpin Pablo Escobar, with following seasons likely to follow another historical drug dealer. The show's intense drama garnered international praise, especially for Wagner Mora's portrayal of Escobar from the late 70s to his death in 1993. All that time hunting him. And just like that, I'm looking down at Pablo and Escobar. With multiple accolades, including Emmy and Golden Globe nominations, and impressive immersive production design, Narcos breathes new life into the tried-and-true police procedural drama. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. 
Katie, you gonna be around later? Um, yeah. Cool. So am I. That was weird. You know me, dude. I'm good for it. I'll come right back. Hey, you know what? I got this. It's cool. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Okay. And a pack of cigarettes? Who are you? I'm Alice, honey. I'm a nurse at St. Louis Hospital. What's your name? I'm the OA. Number one, Stranger Things. Oh, that, that came from something else. The Demogorgon! Oh, what a deep shit! Taking the world by storm, Stranger Things is the epic series we didn't know we needed. This sci-fi drama hybrid uses great storytelling and infuses it with a heavy dose of 80s nostalgia. From the fashion and music to the constant references and homages, Stranger Things is the love child of Stephen King, Steven Spielberg, John Carpenter, and Ridley Scott, and many, many other things. The trick, of course, in using so many references is to somehow create something wholly original. And the Duffer Brothers achieved that and then some. How, how do I find you? What should I do? the story of a young boy's disappearance in a small town, and the possible involvement of a nearby mysterious government facility ignited the imaginations of viewers everywhere. Ah! She broke my arm! My arm! Go. Let's get out of here! Let's go! Go! Yeah, that's right! You better run! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and subscribe for new videos every day.